everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you to your house. Uh, I, I had to run over from judiciary, and I look forward to getting some of these bills before our committee so we can pass them. Uh, but I just want to join you in saying that I'm locked arms with you. Thank you for showing up in the people's house to make it clear that we can criminalize our plan and we poverty for too long. The conversation about legalization is saying that we care about our land, we care about our people, we care about our future, and we're done letting these big industries determine our life outcomes. And coming from a community that has felt the brunt, disproportionately so, of what it means to be criminalized over something that can help people heal and live gainful lives, I feel an urgency and responsibility to say not only should we be legalizing it, yes, I'm working to decriminalize, I'm co-sponsoring a bill to legalize it as well, I'm on the bill for medical cannabis, we're trying to take every step we can, but the, the understanding is that as jobs leave, as families are broken apart, as the future is in question, we can do so much good by getting out of our own way and legalizing cannabis. So I just want to say, and I, and I actually got to run back to the meeting to cast my last vote, is that this is not partisan. This is something that we can all see. And I'm proud to stand with Democrats, Republicans, Independents. I really don't care what your party is. This is about our future. I'm here to fight with you. We're going to win this. We're going to win it now just by being in this building. We're going to win it right now. So for my veterans, for my seniors, for my family members, for those young men and women in, in the streets that are trying to figure out a way ahead and are looked at as an animal and a criminal before, being seen as a human being, I'm proud to be by your side. Let's keep fighting. Let's win. Thank you, Representative. Um, one of the things that we keep hearing from uh, chairman and all that is that all we're doing with this medical marijuana bill is, try, is use it for a stepping stone so you'll get it all legalized. No, we're not, sir. Those bills have already been filed. Those bills have already been filed. We're not using medical as a stepping stone. Those bills have been filed. We're using medical as an emergency for our veterans and the kids who need safe access. So we're not using that as an excuse that we're just using medical as a stepping stone. Those bills have been filed. And I'd like to say one more thing about their gateway theory. The, the gateway is poverty. The gateway is abuse. The gateway is hopelessness. It's not marijuana. Start working on the hopelessness we have in this state. That's the gateway drug. Had somebody come up from Henderson, Kentucky. He's been working with us tirelessly. She's been working with the medical community. She's been on her legislators. She's done everything she knows to do as a citizen lobbyist, and she's done a hell of a job. Grace Henderson, I've asked her to come and speak to you for a couple things. Grace, come up and say a few words. All the way from Henderson.
say that I was not compliant. Uh, when I was 18, I learned that ingesting cannabis could help me cope uh, with both my physical and mental pain and that it didn't give me the side effects that I got from prescriptions. And I did. I tried first one prescription and then another. I've tried nine in 13 years for my Crohn's disease alone and I have 21 diagnoses. In 2007, after taking a pill called Morcaptic Fury, I was hospitalized with acute pancreatitis. That about killed me. Uh, I began to develop what would later be termed as medical post-traumatic stress disorder. And to manage this, I relied on a combination of prescriptions and cannabinoids. You know, the, the combination that these legislators are afraid to support, that's what keeps me functioning. I started working and paying taxes at age 15, and then all of a sudden I had trouble getting out of bed. By the time that I was 30, my doctor said that if I kept working, I would kill myself. Uh, without work, I lost value in myself and began to feel like a burden. In 2009, I had a bowel resection done at Cleveland Clinic and developed bursa in my wound. Uh, that was ripped open and I had a wound back attached for two months. And once that healed, I moved to Philadelphia in an effort to get better medical care and eventually to have access to medical cannabis. While I was in Philadelphia, I was hospitalized four times in eight months, all of that without my family. And that is what taught me that none of us should have to leave our homes for access to better medicine and better health care. As of today, I'm 38. I have required 10 surgeries, including a fusion in my neck. In 2016, I lost the use of my hands and arms due to autonomic system dysfunction, which is suspected to be the result of side effects from biologic cynthia that I took for six years for my Crohn's. You're too young for all that, and you don't look sick, is something that people say to me often. And that might be true, but that sentiment does not help me. That does not help the other people that need this medicine. And trying to manage all of my diagnoses with pharmaceuticals was literally killing me. In 2017, in January, I started taking full-spectrum CBD. Uh, since starting the CBD, I've been able to minimize my anxiety and pain medicine. I've been able to come off of my ADHD medication completely. I've been able to come off of my blood pressure medication completely. I have dropped nine prescriptions in three years. Because of CBD, I've been able to go back to work. I can't even tell you all what that means to me and my family. To not be a burden. That if I can have access to this, I can come off of more toxic pharmaceuticals and more prescriptions because more often than not, they've given me disastrous side effects. <coughs> Maybe the people that will hear this bill don't want that to happen. I don't care what they want. This Woo! is what I want. Yeah! Yeah! I want the opportunity to legally try what has been shown to work in medicinal cannabis states. 34 states, yes. four out of five territories, and the District of Columbia. 66% of the population of America now has access to medical cannabis. Why can't we have that? Why don't we deserve this opportunity because we love where we live? and they do get me fired up, but political reasons aside, the reasons that cannabis can help us is shown by science. We each yes. have an endocannabinoid system. The ECS is regulated by naturally produced chemicals called endocannabinoids. These molecules balance biological functions such as sleep, appetite, the immune system, pain, and more. When the body gets out of balance and moves into a state of stress, endocannabinoids go to work to fix the problem. The medicinal
medicinally active components in the cannabis plant mimic endocannabinoids and so can be effective in helping the body manage crises and restore itself after trauma. Our bodies are made for this medicine. Political reasons are not good enough to deny us this. Kentucky patients deserve access to every single medicine that can help to improve our quality of life and we have a right to choose our own medicine. If this medicine can help even one person function better, then we deserve it. I think we all ought to be able to have whatever helps us manage our symptoms because we're not hurting anyone else. And I'm advocating for people to be able to go to work and come home and medicate in a way that works for them. legitimately achieving symptom relief for patients without risking going to jail for it. It's about parents being able to give their suffering children herbal medicine without fear of losing custody or having their assets seized. It's about the parents of Kenzie Myers having the right to decide to treat their daughter's ulcerative colitis with something safer than the toxic combination of Mercaptopurine and Remicade that killed her colon when she was 12. It's about Alexandria Fulkerson having the right to decide to treat her daughter Colby's seizures with something safer than the Versed that keeps that toddler in a bed. It's about Kristen Wilcox having the right to decide to treat her daughter Shelby's Dravet syndrome with something that doesn't leave her dignity on the floor of Walmart for all of her to gawk at. It's about veterans having the right to decide to treat their PTSD with something safer than the pills that VA throws. Yeah! Something that's far less dangerous than the boilers. Matthew Bradshaw, Matthew, come on up here. There's 
from basically uh, direct Kentucky Normal, and it's the one, one Love Hemp Dispensary. But I've asked uh, Matthew to say a few words about uh, resurrecting Kentucky Normal and uh, what they're doing to help in the prohibition in Kentucky. Matt, thank you. Anybody? 
anybody running for public office. I would uh, encourage everybody to talk to anybody that's got their hands raised, see what their platform is. They wouldn't be here if they wasn't pro-cannabis. Let's help them out if we can. We have to get pro-cannabis candidates in. Bear their hands are up, get with them and talk to them. One thing about our politics in Kentucky, one of the things that keep us totally divided is we're not allowed to vote on an issue. If there's one issue in Kentucky that is nonpartisan, it's this issue. We have libertarians in this hall. We have independents in this hall. We have Democrats in this hall. We have Republicans in this hall. We want to get Kansas prohibition for all Kentuckians, not for a select few. We want to see this racist prohibition in. Yeah. Yeah. It has to end. Yeah. I've also invited a fellow over. He, uh, when you all leave here, there's a big bus in, in the, between the annex and the Capitol building, and it's a rolling dispensary. 100% legal. Now, he can't, he can't dispense too much of one sub, uh, thing out of here, but you're going to get an idea of what Jeremy Jenkins is doing with the enlightened pro, uh, real cannabis. And I've asked him to come and let you know what's going on in the industry in the United States. He takes this bus. He advocates all over America. He's been, he goes to the legal states, the non-legal states, and he's driven a long way to come here and support us. And we thank you so much, Jeremy. And I want you to just tell these folks what we're missing out on. Oh, Jason Nemus, come on up, folks. There he is.
want to tell you about the industry. I've had an opportunity to visit probably 1,500 of these marijuana dispensaries. I've had a chance to meet tens of thousands of people that consume cannabis for medical reasons. I'm a self-diagnosed medical cannabis, cannabis patient myself. Uh, the, uh, uh, so uh, I've seen what it does and the impacts. And so one of the things I want to talk to you about for a moment is reasons and effort. Both on your all's part and on the efforts of your politicians. There's a lot of reasons. Here's some reasons. Reasons vets won't commit suicide nearly at the race yard. Reasons of kids not having epileptic seizures. How about the reasons of the hundreds of thousands of jobs that I've got to witness people have? How about the reasons of the billion dollars in tax money? There's a lot of reasons. And so as you guys are looking at and trying to figure out what it is you say to your senators for rating them is not a good idea. Finding out their reasons that they care about, those are important things because I'm here to tell you throughout the industry, all of these reasons are valid. Why somebody would want cannabis legalized, all those reasons are valid, and they always will be. And all those reasons come true. Property values go up, people get jobs, people get healthy, lots of things happen, and that's exciting stuff. Yeah. 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 Talk about it. This is a great effort. It's not over. You go through the house and feel like you're halfway in your pond. you got to keep that effort. You're just now really getting started. You're in the game. We've been trying to get in the game a long time. We're just now in the game. This rotunda should add twice as many people yes. in it. Yes. That's what should have been here. And when we leave today, we don't get to go lay down like we just won. We haven't won anything. We have a lot of effort to put forward. So if everybody wants to see with 34 states and three countries, have got to see the jobs that were created, the economy turned around, the health and wellness of those people. It's those reasons you need to talk about, and it's that effort that you got to put in. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this has been good. This has been good. But like Jeremy just said, it don't stop here. Um, we do have more people than last time, last year. We're going to do it again next year. Until we end Prohibition in Kentucky, we'll be up here. And we've got to double the numbers. We need to be overflowing this room and now on the Capitol floor. Indianapolis can do it. We can do it. Now, like I said, there's 138 legislators in this state that control 4.3 million of us citizens. That's a lot of power. It ain't about the money they make. So trust me, the old man will tell you, they don't make that much money. But it's that power. It's that power. And if they think that power is in jeopardy, they'll start singing a different tune. So we got to put that power, we got to put their seat in jeopardy. And there's a couple of people that we're going to center in on this interim. And they're either going to move with us or they're going to move out in front. We've got a couple of legislators here that own hemp licenses, they sell CBD, and they're blocking every bit of cannabis legislation that comes to their desk. That has to stop. That has to stop. That's corrupt. That is corrupt. One of the things that I've seen, and I've, I've just, I'm ready to just go nuts about, is we, the, the medical bill, over 50 co-sponsors on this bill. It passed out of committee 17 to 1. It passed off the floor 65 to 30. 65 to 30. It goes over to the Senate, and Mr. Westerfield says no. That's not democracy. We have raised the numbers to 90% approval in this state. We've done our job. We've done our job. We've got the sponsors. We've got the co-sponsors. We've got 10 bills. We've got 90% of this state says we approve. Now do your job, Whitney Westerfield. Do your job, Whitney Westerfield. And represent us. It's our right to the
prohibition of cannabis in Kentucky and locking up good folks. Yeah. It's time to stop. If you're root for medical, we're with you. If you're with hemp, we're with you. If you're with adult use, we're with you. Let's stand under one umbrella, all cannabis supporters. I don't care what type of cannabis you're growing or smoking, whatever, but let's stand together and make a change. And they will listen if they think their seat's in jeopardy. Find out what they're standing for. Go to your legislators when they're campaigning in the interim. Don't wait for the general assembly. Because that's one, of the, that's one of the mistakes we do. We wait until it's General Assembly and the, these senators and let in, reps get their, their phones are flooded. People hitting their doors left and right. They're just waiting to get you out the door to get the next one in. But it's when they're campaigning. It's when they're in their home office. It's when they go to the state fair. And you call them out in a public hearing. Where are you at with cannabis? Do you think I belong in jail because I use cannabis? Put them on the spot. That's what I'm doing. If somebody's running for office, I'll tell them straight up, where are you for cannabis? And if they talk out of both sides of their mouth, I have no time for it. Next one, we're trying to get something done. Yeah, one of the things, too, they say I'm a one-issue person. This issue covers a lot of ground. It co there's no greater civil rights issue than cannabis prohibition right now. We are locking people up. It is a civil rights moral issue. We're locking people up for something that is helping others and they're trying to help themselves with. We are not criminals. We're not the bad guys. So please, let's stand up, stretch a little bit. Let's yell out to them one more time because they're in session. It's my right to decide.